Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and what I got for you today is a review of the new JXT 509W. Now the 509W model, as compared to the 509G, as you might infer by the W in it, is that it uses 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal to transmit or transmit the FPV signal, not to a uh, 5.8 gigahertz FPV screen, but instead to your uh, smartphone. Now, why would you want to use a smartphone instead of a, uh, five, a dedicated 5.8 gigahertz FPV screen? Well, the cost of that screen adds a lot of cost to the quadcopter. In fact, this 509W model is over $30 cheaper than the 509G model. And for that, you still get the same quadcopter with altitude hold feature, still the same transmitter. Um, it's just that you don't get that receiver screen that comes with it. Now, there are issues with Wi-Fi that you have to consider now and keep in mind. Wi-Fi operates at 2.4 gigahertz frequency. That is the same frequency as this transmitter. Now the 509G model can get over 100 meters range. I don't think this is going to be able to do that uh, since it's using the same, you know, 5 or 2.4 gigahertz. Maybe we'll see about 60 meters range. Uh, so you, will, you should see some reduction in the actual range that you'll be able to control the quadcopter and also see FPV. Both of those should be reduced to around, I'm guessing, around 60 meters. We'll find out today out here in the desert. Um, another thing you have to consider with the Wi-Fi FPV flyers is they normally are not capable of recording in HD video, even though these, a lot of them are advertised uh, recording in 720p HD. They cannot. Uh, usually they, what they do is this is transmitted uh, at a lower uh, resolution to reduce the uh, data stream that has to go to your phone to reduce lag. Usually it's around 640 by 480. Uh, even sometimes I've seen 320 or 360 by uh, <laughs> 180. What's what's the half? Or anyways, you know what I mean. What I'm trying to say here, folks, is they reduce the data stream, the size of that uh, resolution of that video. To, uh, to uh, enable uh, e re reduction of lag of the video to the screen. So again, this is, I believe this is 640 by 480 resolution that you'll be able to record on your phone. You will not be able to record it to an SD card on your camera. Um, this one does not have a SD card slot on it, in fact. So you, you have to use the app that receives the F a FPV signal to record the videos uh, stream directly to your phone and I believe the name of the app for this particular model is Explore Exploration UFO. I'll, I'll tell you after I turn on the quadcopter here and bind it up. But overall again this does have uh, altitude hold just like uh, the 509G and to to activate you press this button here and it will automatically take off to about uh, one meter height and you can adjust the height after that by pushing up or down on the throttle stick. This button here is for your lights to turn them on or off to save battery power. Uh, one key return is right here if you want to use one key return. Uh, headless mode it has and you activate it by pressing this button here. Photo and video is for the um, five or the G model which uh, uses the rec uh, receiver screen. It, it will not work with this particular model. You are going to need to use the app to record photos or videos. You can change the rates of the quadcopter, by the speed of the quadcopter by pressing this button here. And you can also do a flip by pressing this button here and then telling it which direction to flip. If you wanna calibrate your gyros if the quadcopter is not flying steady in, in uh, hover, you can do such by moving st both sticks down and to the uh, inboard side like this. And if you crash, since this is an altitude hold quadcopter, those motors might continue to run for a few seconds. So if you crash, always remember to turn off the motors and doing an emergency stop. And that is done by pulling down and out. So try to remember that, folks. If you crash, down and out. So let's go for a flight of the 509W. Okay, I have my sunscreen attached here, and I am recording the video screen. Uh, what I'm actually uh, seeing on the video screen here. Let me adjust it a bit before we do that. A little bit higher. And um, I got a nice clear signal, actually. It's a very good signal. I'm surprised. Okay, turning on the quad cup or the transmitter and binding it. And let's try that one key takeoff. All 
Actually, I guess, I thought this did one key takeoff. Hold on, if I remember correctly. Maybe not. Let's turn it off. Let's hold it down and see if it takes off. No, it just starts into idle, and I guess you have to take off manually with this one. Okay, increasing throttle. Adjusting throttle to about that height. We'll use that. It's holding that height very well. Okay, going to FPV. Well, actually, before I go to FPV, let's fly it around to show you this thing holding itself in the air at that height and doing a darn good job of it. That's what I like about the 509s. They are good altitude holders. <laughs> they do it very well. Great quadcopter. Let's see what kind of FPV range. I'm going FPV right now. Going, Looking into the sun here. So it... Okay, I lost the signal right about there. And that is about 30 meters away. Let's bring it about here. Okay, I'm going back to the signal again. Let's fly it out by and see when we lose signal again. Okay, right about there. And again, about 30 meters away. So, if you're using this, Okay, I'm, I'm flying FPV also again. The signal. Because it's operating on the same frequency as this transmitter, you know, you can fly FPV with it, but you want to stay relatively close. Where am I? Let's, there I am. See? <laughs> you got to use a small area to fly, folks. Don't expect to be able to fly very far with this. It works. It works very well. Let's climb up a little higher so I don't want to hit myself in the head. And it breaks in and out. But the signal, you lose it. Okay, for the remainder of the flight, I'm going to fly close to show you. I'm still going to continue recording the video to enable you to see that it actually holds position and also records video. And you'll be able to see uh, the maximum distance I'll be able to fly with this thing is rather limited. Still using its altitude hold feature. Interesting quadcopter, huh? Let's take it up a little bit higher. Let's go up higher a bit. I got your jets going over again. Uh, they're way off in the distance. Way off in the distance, but boy are they noisy. <laughs> yes. There we go. And he is over 10,000 feet up. I can barely see him, yet I can sure hear him. Way up there. <laughs> okay, I'm still getting good signal on this. By going up a little higher, I, I don't know what the deal is there. Maybe that helps to increase the range, is to put a little altitude on it. Okay, while we're out there, let's see what the range of the quadcopter is, the control range. I'm going out, bud. Take it up a little higher. I got good control range on it. I'm out about 60 meters or so, maybe a little farther. So the control range of the quadcopter is, is pretty good. And actually, I got good signal, too, still out there. So I guess it has something to do with altitude, too. Let's take it up a little higher. Okay, I am about 50 feet up, and at least about uh, 60 meters out. Okay, signal gets a little choppy out there. There I am. Here, another jet going over. But yeah, if you take it up higher, that improves the uh, range of the quadcopter that you're able to fly at. Okay, let's bring it in closer now, from way out there. Going to higher rate, also, to give us a little more speed. Let's see what kind of speed we can get on this thing. The remainder of the flight, I'm going to be flying visually. I want to see what I can, this can do in terms of a flight ability. It is a great flyer, folks, even with altitude hold. Let's see, if I let go of the stick, and then at high speed, does it change altitude? 
seems to come down a little bit and then hover there, but it's still maintaining the altitude. Did we try the flips yet, folks? Let's do a flip. <laughs> it can do flips. It can do flips, and it tries to correct itself after the flip. Well, what haven't we tried yet? One key return. Let's go over there. Where is that one key return? Pressing it. It's sideways to me right now. Notice it's coming right back. <laughs> Let's go back out there again. Try that one key return. One key return. Flying kind of back in my general direction. One more time, we'll go out again. Oh no, I guess that's about it, folks. Okay, remember to turn it off when it hits the ground. So that's the flight time you get with it. And okay, that was the flight of the 509W. What we learned is, yes indeed, uh, the range of the FPV is much less than the 509G model. I'm guessing it's about 30 meters. Um, that's, it's usable though, you know, if you want to fly in a small area and uh, with this, it can, you can easily do it. The altitude hold feature works very well, just like for the 509G. So, you know, it, it makes it very easy to fly this, even with that limited range. Um, Overall, you get a big cost reduction by using your own smartphone instead of the dedicated receiver. But again, you lose the FPV range that you do get with the 5.8 gigahertz system. Um, the control range still seemed to be pretty good for this. I was out there about 60 to 80 meters flying, flying this today. So uh, the control range does not seem to be greatly reduced uh, by the um, 2.4 gigahertz signal. But the FPV range certainly was uh, less than what I was seeing with the 509G system. So you gotta say to yourself, do I wanna save 30 bucks or not by uh, getting a loss in reduction of FPV range? That's the difference there, what you're gonna to need to weigh with this. So hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 with the 509W model from JXD. Hope you enjoyed the flight. Quadcopter 101, signing out.